What is up my friends, you are very welcome along to this Anfield Agenda special video where I'm going to be speaking about the narrative that is being put out there over the course of a long period of time about Mohamed Salah and I want to ask people, not Liverpool fans, but other people, you'll know who as the video goes on, to drop this narrative and start treating him with the respect that he deserves. That and lots more over the next few minutes, but as always folks, we want to know your thoughts. So do let us know in the comment section, drop a like on the video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will be back tonight at 8.45 with the Late Night Agenda as always, so I hope to see you guys for that one. And again, just a little quick reminder as well, we are now just four weeks out from our live show at the Hot Water Comedy Club in Liverpool, November the 15th. If you want to come along to this All Ages event, Event, you can get your ticket with the link in the description as you can see on screen we're going to be bringing a musical act and of course a stand-up comedian with us on the night so we hope that you can join us for what's going to be lots of fun right so i'm going to get into the satellite stuff in a second but just a really crazy stat to kick us off today because it's going to get a bit deep around the salad stuff so let's go a bit light-hearted at the beginning of this video who scored.com put out my favorite stat of the season stat of the season excuse me so far and the stat is as follows and you can look this up yourself darwin nunez our center forward has made more tackles with nine than declan rice arsenal and england central midfielder uh, has in the premier league this season that is astounding for two reasons one obviously darwin is a centre forward and Rice is a midfielder but even allowing for the fact that we defend from the front and press from the front the fact that he's played a lot less minutes than Declan Rice this season as well it, it just absolutely caught me off guard so again feel free to let me know your thoughts on it but it's mental now I want to move on to the main topic of this video and this is the narrative particularly from the likes of Gary Neville and that in the media and the wording of some stuff around Mohamed Salah that quite simply just needs to be better and needs to be more respectful. Now I'm not talking about people maybe saying Salah didn't play well this that or the other that's all absolutely fine. I've done that on occasion I'm sure you've done that nobody's perfect all the time but let me just take you back to the game against Chelsea. And Gary Neville, once again, crying out for Mohamed Salah to be punished for simulation and wanting a yellow card. It's petty and it's pathetic. And it really is just forming a narrative around Mo that us Liverpool fans feel, one, is unhelpful and two, is absolute nonsense. So yesterday, you know what I'm talking about with regards to Mohamed Salah and Neville looking for that yellow. Well, here's a reaction again from social media. So Barry, backseat man's LFC, said... Neville sat on commentary for the biggest broadcaster in football, Sky, and crying about Salah not being booked for this is the kind of shit that feeds into the narrative that Salah is a diver, which leads him to being refereed differently. The most manhandled player in the league. And I don't think that Barry there is on his own with his thoughts about that. Neville has been at this for a while, and I get it. He's a United legend, and he wants to undermine Liverpool at every opportunity. But when Harry Kane does these things, apparently it's clever gamesmanship. But when Salah does it, and he doesn't do it anywhere near as much as Kane, in my opinion, he's lambasted for it, and we have Neville being bitter on comms, calling for Salah to be booked. It isn't helpful, and it needs to stop. Because, as Barry suggested, Mohamed Salah... One is a physical specimen that has tremendous upper body strength that can hold off a lot of these defenders. But I've lost track, personally, of the amount of times I've screamed at the television, wondering what on earth is going on and how Mohamed Salah is being hung out of, dragged to the ground and nothing being given. He is, as Barry said, the most underprotected player in the league and it galls me to see the likes of Neville speaking about him being a diver and asking for yellows for simulation. It needs to stop. He should be better than that. Neville, I mean. And on that, it kind of leads me into another little thing that caught my attention today. So I was looking around the contract situation with Mo and the reports that are out there. And there's a couple of words that jump out to me that I just think are low and unnecessary and the words are that Salah wants and then everyone's either going with capital letters or a quotation mark from the piece to say a massive contract massive again a narrative form there that kind of suggests that he's asking for too much or he's being unrealistic or that he somehow isn't deserving of the recognition and respect that he is now I don't know what this massive contract might be but let's just say for a second 
that it's on the same terms that he's on now, which in itself would be a massive contract, one of the biggest Liverpool have ever given out, but a reflection of what he's currently on. So this narrative, again, in my opinion, is out there to undermine Mo, to undermine Liverpool, and to almost wish Mo out of the Premier League by undermining us, undermining the player, undermining the contract extension. Now, I don't know how this plays out, but I know I don't like the language of it. Another piece here said that Salah wants a massive new contract yet again to stay at Liverpool until 2027. Two-year extension? In that case, because the end of this season is 2025, two years. So even if it's on the same terms he's on now, why not say Salah wants two, three year extension? Or Salah wants, I don't know, parody with what he's on now or parody with the other. It's again this narrative and wording. And go back and look at it in previous ones. You've seen uh, before players like Raheem Sterling calling this out and other players in the Premier League who've had dodgy, shitty headlines written about them. That forms a narrative. And I, I just, again, think it's completely unfair. Mohamed Salah can ask Liverpool for whatever he wants to ask them for. And it's up to the club whether they deem that these valuations are right or not, or whether they're happy to pay or that they aren't. But we need to drop this. And we need to start showing the man the respect that he deserves. And not Liverpool fans, of course. We're perfectly within our rights to speak about Mo from a performance level, whether we think he's good enough or not. But this man is box office this man is a talisman in the premier league and somebody that the premier league should be holding up as a great example to kids to young footballers coming through and to audiences around the world you don't see mohammed salah living a flashy lifestyle you see mohammed salah doing the right things looking to prolong his career by training hard eating well and trying to step in and use his influence for good in the world that's not the type of player that deserves to be undermined. That's the type of player that deserves to be shown the respect that he's earned. So I'm getting fed up of it from the likes of Neville and from some of these headline writers who are almost wishing away one of the best talents that the Premier League has seen in modern times. And I would just say, show the man some more respect. He certainly earned it. And whoever put this narrative in Neville's head about him being a diver, it's pathetic. There are far more players close to home, shall we say, that we could call out for this type of stuff if we wanted to. So drop the narrative around Mohamed Salah. Please and thank you. So that's my take on it, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of a different video this morning, but again, really I'm interested to let us know your thoughts. Do you think I'm barking up the wrong tree here? Or like myself, do you feel that there is a certain undercurrent to some of these headlines and some of these narratives that is unsavoury, to say the least? That's certainly how I feel about it anyway. And I have been somebody, as I've said, who's criticised Mo's performances on occasion, criticised sometimes the distraction of the contract negotiations. But I've never said the man hasn't earned the money. I've never said that he's asking for too much. And I've never tried to undermine him by saying the words like massive contract and simulation and diver. It's all just pathetic. And Sky should be better. Neville should be better. And the football world in general needs to be a bit better. So over to you guys now to have your say. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you guys back tonight at 8.45. Bye-bye.